<clears throat> here's the thing. Here's the thing. Some more random and spontaneous insights from the studio on February the 1st. It's the 1st of February today, which uh, follows the 31st of January, I guess. How about that for an insight? Here's the thing. When I post stuff, what I'm really interested in is not so much presenting you with the facts of our circumstances like so many other good YouTubers are doing. I find it, I find the whole fact truth based broadcasts rather tedious because what I say is we all know, we all know fundamentally what truly matters to you and me, we all know. There are details obviously that are uh, confused and confusing and manipulated and uh, we can always learn obviously how the subterfuge, how deep the subterfuge actually goes. And, I mean there is no end to this because the reality that we exist in, the, the reality that has fundamentally been created for us, we don't do it. Somebody else is responsible for the reality that we experience. It's kind of like a slavery system where slaves are given the reality they exist in. They have no choice in it. Obviously, when you go deeper and deeper into this, even uh, this is, this is uh, very disturbing, but uh, a brilliant insight too, that when you look at the gulags or the, the camps, Auschwitz, people that managed to survive quite often had this incredible spirit within them that lived outside of the reality that was created for them. It's something to consider. It's something that has motivated my way of understanding and seeing the world. The idea that people under extreme stress and um, extreme conditions still manage to overcome because of something they have within them. Within them. So uh, uh, go for your facts and truth somewhere else. Don't look for it here, although I sometimes touch on the stuff that's going on because it's so obvious. It's so obvious the statistics that are being rolled out on this beer virus, for example, the facts are so clear. Dying is now a pandemic and uh, stay safe from the people that tell you to stay safe. I can't stand that anymore, that I stay safe, stay safe, yeah, stay safe. You don't need to tell me to stay safe. What kind of bullshit is that? If I don't have enough regard for myself to stay safe, I don't need anyone else to tell me. I guess it's just a nice gesture. Somebody saying to you, oh, stay safe, yeah, it's like, oh, you care about me? Yeah, really, you care about me. Yeah, you really care about me, like the, uh, the leadership the governments, the politicians, the people that tell us to tell us to stay safe, the white coats, the white coats who are in there with both feet telling us what to do and what not to do, stay safe, underlying it all. Anyway, my, again, I'm going to repeat this, I've said this often, that my interest is in creating a context for the experiences that we have collectively and certainly my experiences, what I've understood in terms of my day-to-day -day life, I suppose, the, the every, things happen to me every day, things that I create as a painter, why I say spontaneous insights from the studio, it's literally what happens when I make a painting. I have no idea really what's going to come out. It's not uh, traditionally uh, the, the classical format always relied on certain uh, standards and tools or, or uh, a, a basis, uh, a standard. Yeah, a standard is the best word for it that we create. There was like you went to school, art school, whatever school you go to, and you are taught the principles or the basics. And there's nothing wrong with that. I, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm completely on board with knowing how to handle your materials, for one thing. Or if you're doing life drawing and you're representing reality and you're doing a, a, you know, a fabulous hand or, or side of the face portrait or whatever you're doing, yes, those are standards that have carried through tradition. But a lot of that in, in a certain way is out the window. Yeah, it's, it's, it's out the window because we're in uh, 
We're living at a time when it's, to me anyway, it's, it's more obvious than ever that we need to rely on a standard that is, comes more from an inner world. And unfortunately, I was having a bit of a, a laugh yesterday. I was talking to a friend who was saying, you know, Tom, what's really quite curious is the people that are reporting the news or telling us the news, uh, especially uh, girls, women, uh, they appear in their voice to be like teenagers. And so the wisdom is spouting out from teenagers now. It's almost like a, a psychological reinvention of the idea of wisdom that somebody who is in their teens can give us brilliance and insight. And the news is promoting people that are sounding like and sometimes even looking like 16-year-olds uh, reading the news. And uh, I, I guess it's the, the youth culture idea that is being propagated so that any wisdom coming from an older fart like me uh, would be ignored because you rely on people that sound like they're 16, not 60. We had a bit of a laugh about that. And uh, he's, he's a bit older and I said, uh, make sure you're wise before your demise. And we had a laugh about that. Let's be wise before our demise. I think it'll do well for us in uh, what I consider to be eternity with I have a romance with eternity. It's natural for a, a creative person, a visual artist, to have a romance with eternity because most of the work that is produced that is of value in some form uh, uh, addresses this, this concept of the inner world and that which is not the physical world. So my point today, here's the thing. <laughs> I finally get to it after six, seven minutes. Here's the thing. I draw, I draw a line under everything that we are able to experience. Facts, truth, lies, uh, fantasies, unicorns, paintings. I draw a line or I, I create a sort of default recognition of something that I experience or see that if it conjures within me, not conjures so much, but if it uh, resurrects or if it uh, endorses a sense of satisfaction in the suffering of others. Now, oh, all right, you're going to say, hey, hey, that's sick, that's crazy. Bear with me for a moment here. I'm, what I'm saying, there is within this, within this, whatever this experience is, whatever kind of surface we're living on, everything, everything that matters to us comes down to two basic things, two uh, unequivocal facts from the point of view, the way I understand existence. And that is a sensibility that I would say is in fact a delight a delight is a wonderful word. It, it has such a sophisticated sound and feeling. I delight. I delight. There is like a light in it. I don't know the D part, D light, uh, to be subservient, defaulted to the light. I am defaulted to the light, this feeling within me. This is something that is uh, very instrumental for me to conjure things as well, the delight that I feel. Now, when this delight, this this fundamental feeling, it has no attachments whatsoever other than itself. That, that feeling of, of, I suppose you could call it a pleasure, That's that pleasurable feeling that we experience at something is a form of delight. I like that word. I'm going to use the word. Use your own. Use pleasure, whatever. That this feeling is generally invoked when we, when we touch on that higher part of us, that self, that higher self. Now here, here is a very fundamental danger that I see in all of the things that are going on around us, that this fundamental nature within us, this ability to delight in something, is subverted to actually be delighting in the suffering or non-delight of someone else. So in order to delight in the misfortune of others, I have brought this up many times, is really a subversive 
ugly kind of thing. And most people will say, no, of course not. It gives me the eebie-jeebies to, uh, uh, to, to, to think of somebody, let's say if you see somebody that hurts themselves or breaks their leg or falls off a bike or whatever, you, you get sort of the cringe feeling. Or let's say a, uh, you see a creature suffering or you see a, see a film and films really, uh, they really uh, make a lot of headway with people on this. So these, these, for example, these films embellish this quality within us to, uh, to pull at our strings in a certain way that the good guy, bad guy idea, for example. So you have the good guy uh, when he is hurt or suffering, we cringe. And if the bad guy is being uh, pummeled, uh, we delight. We delight in this. So this is kind of a conditioning that's happening in order to undermine this fundamental feeling that we have within us that tends towards delighting in the success of another uh, uh, being or of another person or uh, the well-being of just experience in general. We delight in uh, the idea that things are really wonderful. So when this is being undermined, as it is now in spades these days, this is like super duper delight in the suffering of others. If you think about lockdowns and the extreme measures being taken by those in authority, the only conclusion I have is people involved in this activity delight in our misfortune. Now it's all cleverly camouflaged with some sort of stay safe and medical or health initiatives that were used by other tyrants and authorities in the past like Germany. Germany predicated or Hitler and his cabal and bunch, his ugly bunch, brought in a lot of health measures in order to corral the population a certain way. And the only way that he was able to do that is through people delighting in the misfortune of others. So what I'm saying, when this sense in us comes up, even in films, let's say the bad guy, oh, I delight in the uh, demise of the bad guy. This is very dangerous because we, we have this uh, vulnerability. I, I believe this is a vulnerability within us because it's so innocent and deeply felt this 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 sense of uh, uh, there's almost a kind of euphoria in it when I'm painting a certain color combination I literally feel a sense of euphoria when it works it's it's phenomenal it's like something that is so uh, um, deeply ingrained in my nature and I I'm not I'm no different from anyone else I'm sure of this that when you look at something or listen to something experience something you see nature around you you have this this welling up in you of of this literal this this euphoria this delight and this is being undermined this is something that's allowing the reptiles and the fuckers and the bastards to create a reality that is so abusive, so abusive to everything. I mean, you don't have to go far to see how everything is being turned upside down. Where is that coming from? Where? Why is there such compliance with the destruction of everything that is meaningful and important to our nature? Where is this coming from? And what I say, like the Nazis were able to coerce people to delight, or I wouldn't even say coerce, uh, 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 pervert people into this feeling, people uh, for some reason latched on to having their delight related to the misfortune of others. This is how the Nazis succeeded and this is how the present circumstances we're in is able to escalate and there will be no end as long as this, this, this feeling that each person is responsible for through their conscience, what I say, when you, when you sense within yourself, this is my recommendation, that you have any delight for the misfortune of others. And I, I, I have a great difficulty myself when it comes to the reptiles and the bastards who are just destroying everything. I, I understand that this is, uh, this is that I'm on very thin ice in many ways to delight in their misfortune. I try not to go there. But obviously, I, I mean, <laughs> I'm red-blooded and I have, I have angers and... Uh, uh, it, it occurs to me, but 
the, the point is not to punish the reptiles in essence, but to shift that delight into something that actually works for us and everyone else. And in doing so, we supersede the programming that is being instilled in us to delight in the misfortune of others. This is the programming right now. And you can see this uh, uh, th uh, very clearly in the behavior of the authorities, law enforcement, all these people that are out there pummeling seniors, vulnerable people, trouncing on them. This is like partially the, this, this is an indication of how perverse a system has become when those people responsible to, to keep you safe are in fact making sure that you're, that you're definitely in demise, that you're going to be pummeled and punished and hurt and possibly die because of their activities. So my, my thought today is uh, this is the, the, the line I draw under everything. When you notice within yourself that you actually uh, feel a kind of, uh, what is that, excitement uh, or some kind of uh, perverse pleasure, this is something each person has to recognize for themselves when they're experiencing something, not to give into that. You, you have to shift into something that gives you actually a feeling of excitement and enjoyment for the goodness of something rather than from uh, feeling like uh, uh, that, that, you're, you're, that you're subject to manipulation and influences that make you as a person lesser. That's what I'm saying. So it's not so much determining the facts, man, the facts and the truth about stuff, but to recognize within ourselves when we're deviating from the path that makes things work. Conscience is important in that. Con wherever that is, conscience is important. That's what I say. We cannot deviate from this, from this fundamental understanding that we want to delight in the, in the goodness of something, not in the misfortunes. So just something I've mentioned this quite often actually uh, th this sort of thing but it's very clear now with all the beer virus uh, strategies that the bastards are doing they're they're trying to get us to get on board like the Nazis did that one group is worse off than another right now it appears that the seniors uh, or those older are afflicted mostly by this uh, so-called beer virus which is basically a statistic there is no evidence any person has in terms of this being real other than people die of course people die but they're not dying on mass the way it's being presented in a pandemic it's not happening you can say yes all oh, people are my friends are dying oh yeah it's COVID well let it be whatever but the numbers do not qualify for this to be a pandemic there are approximately 60 million people that die every year and uh, in 2019, it was something around 58 million on the planet as a whole. And it's the same this year or last year in 2020. So uh, whatever is happening, death and dying is not a pandemic. That's what I say. I don't care what it, you, you can call it whatever you want. You can call it death COVID or you can call it hangnails. I don't care. Uh, a death is a death. But if it's not on the extreme, the way it's being presented, it's not happening. And the reason they're doing it is to get you accustomed to delighting in this fortune of others. That's what I say. So be aware of this and uh, make sure that you truly want the best, not just for yourself, but for everyone else around you and all creatures on this earth.